thank you for the organizers for inviting us, and thank you, I want to commend all of you for the terrific progress over the last year. So I don't want to try to keep you from your cocktails, try to move along. Clearside Biomedical is a publicly traded pharmaceutical company focused on retinal diseases of the, uh, the treat blinding diseases. We are a publicly traded company, so if we may have forward-looking statements or data interpretations, consult our risk factors before you want to invest. Uh, over the past year, we've been quite a busy company. We've run three phase three clinical trials and one phase two clinical trials looking at um, diabetic uh, uh, macular edema, retinal vein occlusion, and uveitis. If I leave you with one thing, we, we have uh, consider, um, supercortal delivery of our first product, Triamcinolone, is a 90-day delivery that we anticipate We'll complete our uh, phase three clinical trial, and we anticipate that we'll be filing our NDA sometime later in the quarter. Retinal vein occlusion is combining that same triamcinolone with, uh, in supercortal delivery called Zypir with uh, ILEA that we've completed the first enrollment of our phase three clinical program. We're anticipating announcing that data also sometime in the fourth quarter. We've also continued enrollment of our third phase three clinical trial, which is taking ILEA, uh, sorry, with the uh, Avastin and um, Lucentis along with supercoroidal Zypir, and we anticipate completing that enrollment later next year. And we also completed a phase two with diabetic and diabetic macular edema combining ILEA with Zypir for, and we'll talk about that data. I wanna have an opportunity to talk about some of our preclinical programs, but we do have preclinical programs in retinal vascular disease as well as orphan disease gene therapy. So we've all talked about the difficulty in delivering drugs to the eye. We take a microinjection platform where we tuck drug just under the sclera through an area called the suprachoroidal space that spreads immediately and three-dimensionally around the posterior side of the eye. This provides some benefits to the way the fluid can actually flow to the disease target and actually can be done as simply as an intravitreal injection. I'll spend a few minutes on this slide, or just a few seconds on this slide. The reason why we do this is so we can have better access to these diseased tissues. And with a, with a compound like triamcinolone, we're trying to reach these diseased tissues with more drug, and we can deliver nearly 10 to 20 times the amount of drug than an intravitreal injection. But at the same time, we're trying to avoid the anterior segment tissues of the eye. And in this case, we find very little drug in the lens or in the anterior segment where we uh, typically would uh, see glaucoma. So this provides an opportunity for a 90-day delivery of a steroid-like triamcinolone without many of the tr traditional side effects you would see with intravitreal in, uh, approaches. So, let me introduce you to the uveitis program that we anticipate filing our NDA later on in the quarter. Uveitis is one of the leading cause of blindness. The National Eye Institute recognized that macular edema associated with uveitis is a considerable condition that needs to be dealt with. And they ran a study recently looking at periocular subtenon, dexamethasone, sustained release ozodex, and intravitreal triessence. And in that study, they concluded that the intravitreal approaches were better at treating the macular edema than periocular, in both vision and macular edema. However, the side effect profile is still consistent with what we've seen in the literature, with nearly 30% of patients having intraocular pressure increases and uh, versus 24% with a periocular approach. So how do we balance this risk-benefit profile? We ran a study called the Peach Tree Study. The Peach Tree Study included patients with glaucoma into this study, and we allowed patients who have macular edema associated with uveitis to be treated. Now, we did four firsts in this study. This is the first time that we've delivered a product suprachoroidally in a controlled pivotal phase three clinical trial. This is also the first time that we've looked at BCVA as an endpoint and macular edema as a, as a target. But we also concluded that we would include 
every type of uveitis patient, including anterior, posterior, pan, and uh, intermediate. What do we find? 47% of the patients had a three-line improvement of vision at the, end, at, at the primary endpoint, meeting our primary endpoint at week 24. We saw 14 letters of vision improvement mean gain during the course of the study. But when we looked at all the other signs of uveitis, we saw two-thirds of the patient have complete resolution of their signs of uveitis. So not only were we treating the macular edema and the vision, we're also playing a role on the inflammatory cells within the eye. This is one of our doctor's favorite slides. As far as durability is concerned, we only had three patients that were rescued during the first eight weeks of the study. For uveitis patients, that's remarkable because mostly 50% of these patients are being rescued in the first uh, eight weeks to, to, to 12 weeks. But when we looked at side effects, we only found that 10% or 11% of the patients were less than 22 millimeters of mercury or had a 10% change or received meds. Now, our control arm in this study was a sham control. So we were able to look at these patients and, conduct, and conclude that if they were given intravitreal approaches of treatment, 26% of these patients ended up having increased intraocular pressure. As far as cataracts by six months, I get it, cataracts come at 12, but you can see cataracts, you, uh, we, we're within the natural history of cataract progression within this study. So can Zypir be an approach that provides a better risk-benefit profile for a 90-day delivery of a steroid, and can we do it uh, with this condition? And we look forward to, to growing the company. As we've got, come to a point of filing our NDA, we have open an office in California for uh, as we uh, start our commercial business and begun hiring for preparation of, of uh, an approval, hopefully through the FDA. Our other approach with vein occlusion for our phase three clinical trial is can we use the benefits of a steroid to decrease the retinal thickness more quickly than just VEGF alone by combining Zypir with the anti-VEGF inhibitor ILEA. This new approach is being run through our first phase three clinical trial in retinal vein occlusion called SAFIRE. This, this uh, phase three has been completely enrolled and we'll be looking forward to showing the endpoint end sometime in the next few weeks. But in phase two in our tanzanite study, we were able to demonstrate that at two weeks, or sorry, at, at, at month two, we did have incremental improvement of vision versus ILEA alone, where nearly 61% of the patients had a three-line improvement of vision with fewer injections, nearly 60% fewer injections. In our DME program, we were trying to do a similar thing. Where we completed the phase two, we were able to demonstrate that we had equivalence of vision in to ILEA alone, monthly ILEA alone, with nearly half of the number of treatments that we gave to these patients. So there was a promising signal in DME as well, and we look forward to concluding that. In summary, ClearSight has a robust intellectual property portfolio protecting our approach to the suprachoroidal space to treat retina and choroidal diseases. And if you follow us over the next few months, we have a number of inflection points that I'll point to, but the NDA submission as well as the phase three clinical trial outcome we're anticipating in retinal vein occlusion. I thank you for your time and attention and thank you for the organizers for having me. Mm -hmm.